and welcome to another episode of You Love Comic Books. This is episode 92 of the YouTube show where I showcase my recent comic book hauls, comic book speculations, and stuff from my collection. So I got a big haul for you guys. This one, a lot of great books in here, a lot of great finds. I even got a bunch of toys, and that's why I'm surrounding this this episode with toys so before i get into the haul do me a favor smash that uh like button helps with the evil youtube algorithm which tries to keep us all down by smashing that like button more people will get to see this video if you have any questions of what you see leave a comment if you have any uh or you know you just want to say hi or whatever and i'll get back to you accordingly if you like these type of videos like comic calls comic speculations comic collections etc why not subscribe? Become part of the You Love Comic Books conversation. Help me get to a thousand subscribers before the end of the year. That would be awesome. All right, let's do this. Let's get into the haul real quick. Wolverine, Last Mutant Standing, Part 1, Issue 37, the variant cover. This one I grabbed because this is Greg Capullo's return to the Marvel Universe. He's been in the world of Spawn and DC for decades. I'm trying to think the last time he did anything for Marvel. If you know that answer, leave it in the comment section. The uh, Virgin variant of this book was going for a decent amount. I don't know what the deal with this one is. Happy to grab it. It's kind of. It took me a minute to figure out that that was uh, Greg Capullo. Like, it's got a little mix of a bunch of things like Pachalo and Adam Kubert, uh, you know, Quesada. But, you know, you look at it and you realize, okay, that's a Capullo. Long Go look at some old X-Force issues and you'll be like, wow, he came a very long way. So happy to have that. Another uh, Wolverine 36, first appearance of the Hellverine. This is the variant, the Lian Yu uh, variant. Happy to get this one. This is a cool cover with the claws dragon with the motorcycle. I picked this one up. I don't know if this shows very well, these foil variants, but I figured why not pick it up? This is the new Power Girl uh, comic. I don't know. I was in the store and I was like, eh, I'm going to grab that. It's an impulse buy. So happy to get that. Again, I don't know. It's kind of tough. It's a little dim. I'm not, I don't know if I'm a fan of the foil covers, but still happy to have it. This is some free Batman Day books. So happy to grab those. It's a Batman Catwoman, the Gotham War Prelude, Batman the Joker, and the Deadly Duo. So these are pretty cool. Miracle Man 28, I haven't read this yet. I'm curious how long this series will go on for. Uh, this book was on, like, it took years for them to, for this come out. Because um, they were releasing reprints, and then they did, like, they went up to, like, issue 16, and then they started up again at number one, which was really, you know, like, number 17, the Miracle Man run. And then it stopped at, like, five or whatever, and it took like five years from the start this up. And then they started with number one again. So, I don't know. Let's see how long I keep buying this. Mandalorian number four. Uh, this is based on the season uh, season two, episode four. Which I think is... I don't think this is the first Ahsoka. I could be wrong. Uh, if it is, I wish I got the variants. I think that's issue five. I'm going to keep my eye out for that one. They have a lot of cool covers for that. Dark Droids, Dark Vader number 39. I didn't read this yet, but, you know, happy to grab it. And, uh, you know, I saw the variant of Hondo Onaka, and I figured, why not pick this up? I feel like this is going to be one of those covers that may not be big right now, but, like, in a year or two or whatever, if you ever come to the live action anyway, this book will be highlighted. I don't know if Hondo has appeared in MC Marvel Comics yet i'm pretty sure he's appeared in uh i know he appeared in like the idw i think it was an idw that did like the kid the more kids focused comics so happy to grab that transformers number one the big return with image comics and skybound this is the i got my hands on the ryan otley cover they did not have the uh the, the standard cover which is the optimus and then there's some like crazy star scrim cover that one looks sick and that's the big uh, hit of this one. I haven't read it yet. It looks pretty interesting. I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to keep reading this series, but I figured I'd give it a shot. And this is a cool cover of Optimus Prime just decimating Starscream. That is a that is a finishing. That's a TKO. All right, so let's get into the 
that was like the new books. Then I'm going to show you some back issue books. So, but before I start that, do me a favor, hit that like button again. Do it three times. I'm just kidding. Once is good enough. Uh, there's links in all my videos. One is for my Instagram, you love comic books. Come follow me there. I showcase these books that you see here, as well as stuff from my collection. Also, there's a link to my eBay store where I have toys, comics, trades, video games, etc. Check that out. The link's there. All right, cool. Let's do this. So this was at, I think, a second in Charles. And uh, this one was like 95 cents. Fright number 12. This is the last issue in the series. This is the, uh, if you watched a previous video of mine uh, from a couple back, this was my insane dollar bin haul. I found Fright number three, I think that's the number. I could be wrong. That's the one that has Freddy Krueger on the cover. That book that was an amazing find. I couldn't believe I found it. It was in nice condition. But this is number 12. This is the last issue of the series. I figured why not get them. They're not easy to find. So that was cool. Pick these up. Heart attack, number one. Heart attack, number one. <laughs> Heart attack, number one. We'll see. This is some spec here. We'll see if this plays out. It might not. Who knows? That's the nature of spec. They announced a, a show. This is a Skybound Image comic, which is a Robert Kirkman corner, I guess, of the Image universe or whatever. So happy to grab those. We'll see what happens. If this series ever launches, the writer's strike has ended. So uh, who knows? Some projects do get left in the dustbin, unfortunately, when there's strikes. So we'll see if this one will continue. Remember, these uh, streaming services thrive. They, they're starving for new content always. So anytime they could find something. So that's why it's always good to find these indie books and stuff like that. All right. Amazing, amazing Spider-Man 406. This one has the cards included. It's like a VF near mint copy. These books are kind of, when they have a card pack inside of the book, it can make it really difficult to find an issue with a perfect spine, like a real nice crisp spine. It's really difficult. They're like just even the production of these books can ruin like, you know, I don't know, whatever. Happy to get this. This is the key significance of this book is, is the first appearance of, uh, they call it like the new Dr. Octopus, Lady Octopus. I'm not sure if the exact character was in the first Spider Miles Morales cartoon. But uh, there's a lot of funny memes of that character. It, you know, you probably ran into those. So happy to get that. And it's a cool Mark Bagley cover. And the interior artwork is actually really cool from Angel Angel Medina. Or, I think that's the name. And then this was the last one I got from that uh, when I went to Second Charles that day. And this is Cyberpunk number one. Really nice condition copy. It's got one tiny minor. I call them, uh, what do they call them? Uh, pressable defects. So it's like, it's not color breaking. If it's got pressed, it would be a perfect spine, I guess, or almost. Cyberpunk 2077, still a pretty popular game. Happy to get this from Dark Horse Comics issue number one. Nice, cool yellow cover. You don't see yellow covers that much these days, so it's kind of cool to see that in a modern book. So I always love finding Silver Age, Bronze Age, and stuff like that with the yellow covers. Golden Age, I have tons of yellow covers, but those are usually way more expensive. All right, and uh, you know what? We're gonna change things up a little bit, guys. I got some other cool stuff for me here. Uh, some toys I picked up. This is one, this is more music related, but he is kind of a funny character in himself, D. Snyder from Twisted Sister. I love these reaction figures, but I could not pass up the uh, Twisted Sister one. It's really funny. Make, you know, they, sometimes they look very generic, but I think that's the whole point because they're based on like the old, like, uh, you know, met, um, Kenner figures. And I'm trying, I'm trying to think of the other ones that, you know, jumped in on it when Star Wars came out. Um, man, I totally blank on that. It. It's like, there it was the big figure company before Kenner that was huge. They did a lot of superhero figures. And, uh, so that's pretty cool. And I guess it's based off the Stay Hungry album. So that's cool. That, uh, Punch Things. Holding on for its dear life. So I'm going to try to keep that in there. All right. And then I was at a Ross. And sometimes you find things in there. So, you know, it's always cool to try to find, like, um, y there's some cool 
like there some of these toys if you go to like Ross which is like a discount store like there's a lot of clear clearance or uh, closeouts or whatever liquidation kind of like Ollie's is like that too but Ross gets them and let me tell you the toy out always looks like garbage like I think I mean a lot of stuff for these type of stores like home goods and Marshalls and all that it's like almost like a joke they want you to have to go through the and find their treasure or whatever they make they don't make it easy things are not easily stacked like there'll be like a giant racing track toy of the toy out and then you you turn you pull it and then there's like 20 different toys behind it so you gotta look everywhere and you'll find some good stuff there and you know sometimes it's worth it so like this one's pretty cool princess Leia organic this is from the end of star wars where she gives a medal to luke and han she doesn't give one to chewbacca what's that about you didn't give chewbacca chewbacca's not metal worthy clearly there that's her way of saying like you're just Han Solo's dog, which is super messed up, because everyone knows that it's actually Han Solo that is Chewbacca's dog. Uh, <laughs> so, happy to get this one. This was $4.99. Really good condition box, especially with how expensive these figures are new. Now, if you want to get any of these new Black Series and Marvel Legends figures, they're going to cost you like 22 to 28 bucks, just a standard figure. So, happy to get that. Um, pick this one up. I might pop it open. We'll see because the card is bent. But this was also only five bucks as well. This is what they do the Black Series archive and they put them on these cards. This is the Grand Moff Tarkin and it comes with the Evil Ball. Or if you guys are fans of Robot Chicken, I think his name was Dr. Ball. They did a whole little bit with that. That's the thing that uh, comes in and tortures Leia. Happy to get this. This is a cool figure. So again, for only $4.99. Pick this up. I think I'm just going to put it in a box, squirrel it away, and sell it one day. Transformers Buzzworthy Bumblebee Cup. This was, I think, $7.99. Again, really nice condition. And they, these things are, like, new. They're, like, $25 to $30 now. It's crazy how expensive this stuff is new. So, Cool. Happy to get it. It's a cool figure. The packaging is weird. I almost feel like it makes this line look like it's like the kitty line, but it's not. It is like the more, um, obviously, these are not <laughs> technically for adults, but you know, like your older kid that, you know, there's more transformation around. So, and it's based on the 86, the movie. So that's pretty cool. And then this one was the big one. This one was $19.99, but I still thought that was a pretty good deal. And I didn't, I don't know. This was like kind of an impulse, but I couldn't pass it up. I think the, uh, you know, the Kevin Eastman, Peter Laird art sold me on it. It's based on the uh, Ninja Turtles first issue. And I think, I'm trying to think what company this is from. BST, AXN. They do a lot of Ninja Turtle toys. Um, I'll open it. We'll see if it, uh, I mean, I'm not going to open them, but... It, the cool thing is this opens up and you know you got some cool art in there and then here's the figures and it comes with two foot clan and it comes with two ninja turtles and remember in the old series they all had red bandanas and it was almost impossible to decipher who who was and this that i mean in this toy i'm pretty sure in the comics you see how they have the initials on their belt i don't know if that's showing i don't think the the initials were on there so that's pretty cool. Happy to get that. All right. You know what? Let's get back to what this show is. You love comic books. Now, toys are related to comics in some way. So, there's nothing wrong with a little, uh, you know, diversion. But let's get back on course. So, let's do some uh, more comics. I was, uh, again, I went to another Second Charles in a different area. And uh, I saw this in one of the bins. It was a four, like a, you know, they had them all together for $14.99. It was a four pack, so I couldn't I couldn't pass it up. War Realms, New Agents Atlas number four. Number three. And these are all in like really primo condition, like near mint, if not better. Uh two. This book kind of blew up. This was going for like 20 to 50 bucks at some point. It was like the first full appearance of the swordsman or whatever. I don't think it's worth as much now, but happy to get it anyway. And of course, they had issue one, which was the reason why I got it. Um, this is a really nice condition copy. So it was 15 for all four. I think that's still a pretty good price. 
the book has come down. I mean, at one point, this comic was $100, which I thought was pretty insane. I hope anyone paid 100 raw for this is uh, okay. <laughs> you know, I'm sure they're fine. They're probably not aware. Who knows? Maybe they sold it already. They got a 9.8 and sold it immediately a long time ago. Who knows? Again, it's like, will we get these characters in any form? Agents of Atlas. Now, this character, Jimmy Wu, has, I'm pretty sure, yes, he was introduced in like Ant-Man 2. And he was also in uh, the uh, Wanda Vision series. So he's a really cool character. I think, what's his name? Park plays him. Anthony Park, I think. I could be getting his wrong, not his name wrong. But uh, he's like a good comedic actor. So we'll see. We'll see where this goes. But happy to grab it anyway. And I had a $5 off coupon, so it was cheaper. <laughs> this one was only two or three bucks. I couldn't pass this one up. This one was definitely worth it. This is Harley Quinn number one. This is that uh, hologram. These holograms were great. Now, see, I'm not sure if it shows up pretty good, but on the camera, yeah, it is. This whole line of hologram comics were excellent from DC. Marvel did a whole bunch of hologram comics years later or around, not too long after. And those things are garbage. Like you could, they're, they're a mess. You can't see anything. So happy to get this. I saw this book goes for at least over 20 bucks. So I thought that was a pretty cool get and it's in really nice condition. And then these were like, I don't know. I mean, I'm happy to get them, but eh, we'll see. Batman, the Bride of the Demon. Uh, maybe this one is one I should have passed on. It's still pretty cool. It's a good read. This is the, the bigger book of the two. These were 15 each. Again, I had a coupon, so it took a little bit off. But Batman, Son of the Demon, they're both in decent condition. They're both first prints. This book blew up back when they first introduced Damien. Because this is ba this story for years was like, man, it's like an Elseworld tale. It's not canon. But then... Damien came into the picture, Batman's son uh, and son of uh, Talia Agul, uh, which is what the story is based on, uh, became more canon. And, that, you know, and they announced uh, the Batman and Robin series or Brave and the Bold movie. That's supposed to be the next Batman movie that's going to come out. We'll see. It's going to be a couple of years. So I figured, why not get this? I do have another copy of this, but I think my copy I have is not in the greatest condition. So it's definitely a massive upgrade. So happy to have those. All right, we're more than, let's roll through these. We're at the almost 18 minute mark. Again, hit that like button, thank you. Power Man, Iron Fist, number 79, newsstand. Really nice condition copy. I was at the store, I couldn't find anything else. I paid way more than I wanted to on this book. I'm not gonna tell you what I paid. Uh, but this book kind of blew up for a minute. We'll see if it goes anywhere. There's some first appearance of some character. I don't know. I also got those free Batman books that I showed you earlier, and uh, some I needed some magazine bags, so which were <laughs> for this book. So it's still cool. I love around this time period though, Power Man Iron Fist. A lot of issues around this time had this awesome like kind of fire engine red cover, uh, background covers. So I think those are all pretty cool. So happy to have it. All right, this was. Uh, my the comic store I go to, my LCS has a dollar bin, and like I showed you, I showed you that one video, that insane dollar bin haul. Uh, this one not as crazy as that, but still some good finds. Uh, found another Huntress number one, so I figured I'll pick that up. That's the first appearance of this version of the Huntress. I forgot her name. This is the one that was also in the Birds of Prey movie, the one they've been using for years. Remember the original Huntress came from like Earth 2 and was like Batman and Catwoman's daughter or something like that. So after Crisis, this character ended up going away and this is the new, they wanted to keep this character but it became a new character. She's like the daughter of a mob boss or something like that. So happy to grab that. Uh, I figured why not grab this, Suicide Squad, King Shark. The X is, is on the bag. I don't know, they put X's on some of them. Not on the comic, thankfully. Happy to grab that. This I thought was a cool find. Wonder Girl number two. The uh, I don't know who was the artist on this one. It's not Jenny Frizan or anything like that. The, the variant cover. It's a really pretty uh, cover for the. Uh, man, I have totally forgot the name of this Wonder Woman, Wonder Girl, or Wonder Woman. Uh, you know, if you know this in the comment section, 
let me know her name. I totally blanked on it. It just, it went. I figured I saw this for a dollar. Um, now this is a great book to get. It's not in the greatest condition. It's got some water damage, but I figured for a buck, why not? Loki season two is on the first episode air. Who knows? Maybe Frog Thor might make another appearance. Remember, he shows up in that awesome, Lo my one of my, my favorite episodes of the Loki series in season one was the one where you got to see all the other Lokis, where Richard E. Grant played the older Loki. Uh, there was a Thor frog trapped and trying to grab its hammer. That was a cool little Easter egg they threw in there. This one's pretty cool too. Not the greatest condition either, but again, I saw it in the doll bin. There's two good previews in here. This is the first preview appearance of Beta Ray Bill. And it is also the first ad. Let me uh, take it out real quick for a spider ham. So I figured why not grab that? That's a pretty cool get. And uh, let's see if Beta Ray Bill. Now the Marvel Age, the first like couple of issues of the series, they're thin. Yeah, so like Walt Simonson joining Thor, and I think that's when he first, and there's Beta Ray Bill. And this is considered his first preview appearance. Shadow, I think my hand's creating a shadow. Here we go. So pretty cool yet. I think this character has calmed down a bit. Beta Ray Bill was like being specked on like crazy. He didn't show up in Thor Love and Thunder. And you know what? Maybe that wasn't for the maybe that was the for the best for that character. Because a lot of people didn't like that uh movie. So maybe I'll, they'll be good and they'll save him for a better movie. Uh this was again the doll bin. This is in really nice condition. Adventures in Reading, starring the amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> this is one of those cheesy books. I always like if I see him in a doll bin or whatever, like these rare, weird freebie books that were from like libraries or like, you know, Spider-Man tells kids not to smoke or something. I always want to grab those. I thought this was a great get. Sen Sensational Spider-Man, nothing can stop the juggernaut. This is a uh, old uh reprint graphic novel. Yeah, you can see by the price. I don't know if that's considered a newsstand or not, but uh, it reprints that uh, awesome two-part Amazing Spider-Man appearance where he fights the Juggernaut. I think it's two twenty-nine, two thirty. I could be wrong, so happy to grab that. This was also in the dollar bin. Web of Spider-Man sixty-nine. This is in great condition. Seventy uh, is the bigger book. That's the Spider Hulk, but this one leads into it. And this book, on average, I always see it go for like six to ten bucks. So, I'm happy to grab that. Uh, this is pretty cool. I figured to grab this as well. Marvel Action Universe number one. This is technically like a reprint of uh, Spider-Man and his amazing friends number one that came out. Now, that would have been awesome to find in a dollar bin. Because that book goes for like 50 bucks easily. I That's a hard book to come by. That's one based on the awesome... Saturday morning cartoon in the early 80s. I don't know if you're my if you're my age, which is old as AF, you'll remember there was an awesome Hulk cartoon uh with an awesome theme song it was like and there was awesome the amazing Spider-Man or uh Super Friends, whatever the hell it was called. So happy to get that. This is pretty cool. Couldn't pass this up. Howard the Duck. Number one, this is the based on the amazing movie where Marty McFly's mom has sex with a duck. Or as we call it, the Howard the Duck movie that George Lucas made in the mid to late 80s. It's not, it's considered a, a turkey, which is not a duck, but happy to get this anyway. I always like trying finding these movie adaptations and especially in a doll bin. And this is an amazing condition, so... That's pretty cool. I don't know what scene this is supposed to be based off of in the movie, but who cares? This is kind of cool. 2001 Maniacs, which is the Robert England movie. It's a remake of another cheesy horror movie about, like, Confederate zombies. And that was called 2001 Maniacs as well. So I figured, why not? And it's an amazing addition. Now, this is, a, this is the best find of the dollar bin. I, I was happy to get this. This is a hard book to come by. I've never seen this before. Now, this is where I think Liefeld excels. This is, 
This is a great Liefeld cover. It's just, it has like all this impact and energy. He doesn't do the interior, but this is based on the movie Six String Samurai. I don't know if anyone's seen it. It's, an, it, it's like a, it was a low budget movie. It came out in the late 90s and it's like one of these post-apocalyptic worlds with like, I don't know, like uh, everything's kind of music related. So he's like this samurai, but he kind of looks like Buddy Holly and he's trying to get to Graceland or whatever. And it's, there's a kid he's protecting. The movie's kind of cheesy. Happy to get this though. And it's also a great cover. All right, this is the last of the group. And then we're gonna wrap this haul up. Uh, I went to a second Charles again. This is a different location. And uh, they must have put finally put all their books out. They always have these boxes, I tell you. I asked them to look at their boxes. And they finally, everything is out now. So I've been finding new stuff in there. Battle Chasers number one, the standard edition, and the reprint. These were both $1.95 each. I thought that was a great deal. So I figured I'd grab them. The second print goes for a little bit more. It's a, it's a rarer. The cover's like, okay. Happy to get those, though. Uh, then I went back again another day because I was like, I should pick these up. Um, hold on, let me, let me, oh, okay. I'll do this in order. It doesn't matter. I grabbed Battle Chasers number three because everyone who likes Battle Chasers just likes it because they like Red Monica. <laughs> for reasons I, I'm trying to figure out why. There's got to be a reason or two. <laughs> Happy to get that. Again, it was only down 95. This one was only down 95. That's pretty cool. Paddle Chasers number six is the Adam Warren variant. And it's from anotheruniverse.com. So I've never seen this before. I figured why not. And then this, I think, was the... This is a hard to get as well. Happy to grab this. Wizard World Chicago Cliffhanger Special Edition. I don't know if this is considered the first print preview of all the cliffhanger books, which is Danger Girl, Battle Chasers, and Crimson. Those were the initial release. But this is hard to come by. It's in an excellent condition. It was either $1.95 or $2.95. I'm not sure. All right. Then to finish up the haul, I found Scooby Apocalypse number one, the reprint. The reprint can go for way more, not way, but not way more, but a decent amount more than the first print. And then this variant cover of Scooby Apocalypse and one from, I think, Howard Porter. And that's a cool cover. And then I, I went back the next day and I realized I was like, I was in the area again. And I was like, I should go back there because I was looking through the, and they had literally had the full run of Scooby Apocalypse in there. Everything was like either $1.95 or $2.95. And I was like, I'm not going to get all of them because I don't care that much. But I looked it up and I was like, holy crap, like the last issue goes for like, last sold for like 30 bucks. So I'm like, I should just pick these all up. So I figured I'd get the last couple issues in the run. Scooby Apocalypse, number 30, 31. And I guess they had like a little backup, uh, like backup stories where uh, Adam Ant, anyone remembers those characters and you're way older than me. <laughs> and it's kind of cool around this time, Fred is a zombie at this point. Scooby Apocalypse 32, Scooby Apocalypse 33, Scooby Apocalypse 34, and uh, Scooby's like really smart in this comic. It's kind of weird. He's not like, <laughs> you know, he's not doing that. <laughs> Scooby Doo, you know, he's more like uh, brainy smir uh, brainy uh, gremlin or whatever. Scooby Apocalypse 35. And then the last issue, like I said, goes for can go for a decent amount of money. Scooby Apocalypse 36. And uh, when I got to the register and bought these, uh, when I went there and got those and then those other Battle Chaser comics I showed you, I realized everything was half off that day. They, I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, we have a sale going and we're not, uh, we didn't advertise or they didn't put any signs up. But, you know, so everything was like, these books were all like a buck 50 each. So I was like, well, even better. I like that. So I ran back. I was like, well, if everything's half off, I saw this the other day. I didn't want to pay 10 for it, but I'll pay five for it. Carnage, number one, welcome to the dark side. This is uh, from the whole um, hip hop variants. The back has some weird, like wrinkles or they're like, I feel like they're pressable defects on the back. It's, it's more like the front of these books because of the black on the sides. 
These books are hard to get in good condition, believe it or not. I think supposedly, uh, one, they can be hard to get because they're like a rare, they're variants. And uh, two, I think some of them had production damage, supposedly. And some of these uh, hip-hop variants can go for a decent amount, especially if it's like a key book. And I figured Carnage is a number one. That's going to be more of a popular one. So I was like, I'm not going to pass that up. So yeah, that's it for this haul. Like I said, lots of good stuff. Nothing super insane, but still a lot of great things. Happy to find the, you know, the Scooby Apocalypse and this Carnage book, the Six String Samurai, which I think has the best Rob Liefeld drawing ever. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Is that a oxymoron? I don't know. Uh, or this boob, red boob Monica cover. <laughs> Yeah, or, uh, you know, we'll just leave it on this Howard the Duck the movie, which was everyone's favorite movie from 1986. No, 87. Came out in 87. Great year for movies. Robocop and Howard the Duck. All right. On that note, you're going to see, I want you to hit that like button. Leave a comment if you have any questions, what you see. Smash the subscribe button, become part of the Ulo Comics conversation. If you uh, check out my eBay for comics, trades, video games, toys, etc., the link's in my uh, caption of each video, as well as the link to my Instagram, you love comic books. Follow me there. See all my stuff from these hauls and stuff from my collection. You're going to see a previous video here. You're going to see a previous video, no, previous video here, a previous video there. You're going to smash that subscribe button. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.